Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the celebration of Mass on the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. In today's Gospel, Jesus speaks to us about loving and trusting him to lead us to the Kingdom of God. Jesus is living food for us, sent from the Father in Heaven. Unlike ordinary food, which just sustains life, this food gives us a life that is eternal. In the Eucharist, Jesus offers us a relationship where we will be loved and feel safe. We need that love, life-giving relationship more than ever today. Also with this Mass, we celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Canon Michael Hackett's ordination to the priesthood on the 18th of June, 1967. In Uri Parish, we are blessed as Canon Hackett regularly celebrates Mass in our churches and serves as chaplain to St. Coleman's College and to St. Ronan's Primary School. Canon Hackett has also worked tirelessly with the voluntary organization Accord NI, which offers preparation for marriage courses, helps couples to a deeper understanding of Christian marriage, and learn of ways in which to safeguard and nourish their marriage and family relationships. Our celebrant today is Canon Michael Hackett.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to this Mass, and it's my ordination, uh, it's Golden Jubilee Mass, so you're very welcome. Uh, I would like to welcome Bishop McAreevy, priest, diocese, and priests from other um, congregations who have come here today. Canon Dermot Jemison, his wife Sheila, Church of Ireland, all those guests who have gathered here to join with me in celebrating this Golden Jubilee. Remember, on 18th of June 1967, it was a most beautiful sunny day and in Maynooth, and we were sweltering with the heat. So it's almost a repeat, thanks God, 50 years later. To the day, the Lord had some plans, even though he on Corpus Christi, which sort of makes it um, to fit a lot of things in. A very special welcome to those members of my family here present. They have travelled from County Tyrone, and uh, I gave me the fortune to Father Michael McGinn, an old friend of mine from way back, who will preach the homily. So now let's ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us the memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, that so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in that waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in that wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does not eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread of our ancestors. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. The poet Paddy Kavanagh from the stony grey soil of Monaghan has a tremendous theology of Eucharist in his always earthy and evocative poetry. In one of his best known poems, one of his most controversial, The Great Hunger, Kavanagh remarks simply this. In a crumb of bread, the whole mystery is. Let's just stay with that, that image for a minute. Something as everyday, something as, as commonplace, something as, as ordinary as a piece of bread. This is for God hides. This is for God it resides in our broken, still unfinished world. And in the middle of all the brokenness, in the middle of all the chaos, Kavanaugh finds God in a crumb of bread. Crucially though, the poet also finds God in the face of the beggar. The beggar on the corner of Baggett Street, the one he calls in another poem, his street corner Christ. The Lord of history present in the bread and wine, or as Paul expresses it in our second reading today, the Lord of history present in the bread that we break, the Lord of history present in the blessing cup that we bless, but always the Lord of history present too in the flesh and blood of humanity, in all its suffering and spectacular diversity. Two sides of the same coin, because we truly reverence the presence of the Lord in the tabernacle when we also reverence the presence of the Lord in the lives, in the living tabernacles of the people around us. 
This is the clear teaching of the Lord, concealed and revealed in bread and wine on the feast of Corpus Christi. The real presence of the Lord in the Holy Sacrament, God's presence in the ordinary, something as ordinary as bread, something as real as the people around us at Mass in the cathedral today. And the people around us today, of course, include our good friend and colleague, Father Michael Hackett, whose 50th Jubilee as a priest we have all come to celebrate in the cathedral this afternoon. Congratulations, Michael, from all of us here as you arrive at this massively significant milestone in your life and ministry. When I began to think about these few words from Mass today, Michael, it dawned on me that we have known each other for the entire span of those 50 years. In September 1967, I had just arrived as a young first year from Lurgan to begin my schooling at St. Coleman's. And you, Michael, a young newly ordained priest, had just arrived from Maynooth to begin your teaching career. In various guises, the two of us have been travelling together ever since. Tempest Fugit, you might say. For in those far off days at St. Coleman's, Michael was my Latin teacher. I was one of his worst uh, pupils. <laughs> that wasn't the fault of the teacher, though. Though Michael, uh, interestingly, in the course of a recent conversation, he confided that he'd make a much better teacher now than he considered himself to be a way back in those early days. And I suppose that's not entirely surprising. I suppose all of us would. I suppose we could all make a better fist of things with the benefit of hindsight. But again, as we all know, coming to the, that, that insight of how little we knew at the beginning is a truth that dawns only slowly, painfully, with the passage of time. It's nearly always that way. It comes to us gradually with the gathering in of those snippets, those few slivers of wisdom that we sometimes manage to scavenge along the way. It has to be said, Michael, that you are one who has tapped deeply into the wisdom and the experience of the years. Specifically, Michael has fostered a kind of enduring enthusiasm he has managed to hold on to hope through all the ups and downs of his priestly life. Michael has opted for a positive approach to everything. He has preferred that kind of positive mindset that we generally find so attractive in, in others. And Michael, too, has grown into that kind of quiet self-assurance that comes from knowing in his heart of hearts that while he may not always have done things as well as he might have wanted, he has nearly always done things as well as he possibly could. And through all the changing circumstances of his life, Michael, it seems to me, has found his way to that wellspring of tranquility, that tranquility of spirit that is forged in prayer, and forged in a sense in suffering, 
and forged by trusting in God's abiding presence through all the changing circumstances of our lives. It's a precious and priceless brand of contentment. A peace of mind, I think, that brings us in the end to eternal peace with God and with all the saints. These days, those of us who are privileged to have known Michael all down the years have a clear sense that he's coming now to that point of deep down joy in his life. A deep down joy that eventually seeps up to the surface of life, of a life immersed in gospel teaching, a life lived out every day in authentic gospel service. In short, all down the years, Michael, we have watched you change and grow and evolve and move on. There was no standing still with Michael Hackett. Always moving on towards that brand of honest humanity at the very heart of his priesthood that we so much identify, Michael, with your personal life and with your public ministry. Michael, having said all of that, for all of us, I suppose, there's still more growing to be done. So hopefully your journey to the fullness of life with all the saints has a good distance still to go. And hopefully, Michael, you're not quite on the home straight yet, although we are well into the second half, mind you, but hopefully there's a good slice of extra time still to be played. There is certainly more work to be done. New insights to be gleaned, new ways of doing things to be learned, many new paths still to be explored. It turns out, of course, that Michael continues to provide pastoral service and to enjoy his ministry as much as ever he did right here in the parish of Newry, at St Ronan's, and in his old alma mater, of course, up at St Coleman's College, where it all began exactly 50 years ago. So, Michael, the old wheel, a bit buckled and a bit bruised, though it may be, has not come full circle just yet. There are a few paths still to be travelled, and so we trust and we pray, Michael, that there's still a turn or two, a good few turns left in the old wheel yet. I mention new paths at this point, as Michael has always taken risks. Michael has always tried to think creatively, maybe a bit more creatively than the rest of us. From time to time, Michael has not been afraid to venture outside the box. And while knowing his own emotional, his own spiritual limits, Michael has always tried to open his mind, to open his heart to new possibilities and to new ways of thinking at every stage, at every turn along the way. Michael, may that long, that courage of yours, that pastoral courage, May it long continue for the glory of God and for the good of all of us here. Carpe diem, the ancients used to say. And Michael has truly seized the day. Michael has truly relished those new challenges, the various opportunities that every new day brings. He has imbibed the faith of his late beloved parents. He has stayed close to his family and close to his ancestral roots deep in the county Tyrone countryside. He even still, God forgiven, continues to enjoy his Tyrone football as much as ever. 
Well, I tell you what now, hopefully, Michael, you'll be disappointed again this year <laughs> on that particular front. I speak now in Uri as a Lurgan man, as an Armagh man, to a, a congregation I, I suspect of mostly down supporters. So our goodwill to Michael doesn't, doesn't extend the whole way. We have to draw the line somewhere. But, but to be that as it may, having said that, one more thing I want to say, I need to say about Michael Hackett. Michael has always allowed the breath of fresh air which blew through the church from the Second Vatican Council at the very beginning of his ministry to fill his mind and to change his life and to colour his ministry in so many ways. Michael is a true son and a true disciple of the Second Vatican Council. That reforming spirit that is needed, so needed once again, in our tired and ailing church. But it also has to be said that all during his long life and ministry, Michael has been one of its unfailing and most stalwart uh, uh, supporters and standard bearers. Fifty years on, I asked Michael lately if he ever gets depressed at the way we find ourselves in the church right now, the church that we've all loved, the church that we've all tried to serve for so much of our lives. His response was clear and unambiguous. In fact, his response was pure Michael Hackett. Depressed, he said. Not at all. Not at all because when something is dying, something new is also being born. Michael firmly believes that the Spirit is leading the church forward. He's right, of course, and so we are never downhearted, we are never afraid. The support of so many of his friends has been so important to Michael down the long years. And so many of them, uh, happily, are joining us in the cathedral on this very, very special occasion. Michael, your dearest and closest friends in marriage encounter, in Lexio Divina, in Accord, and in so many other uh, groups and societies, far too many to mention here, so many groups and societies you have joined and served in the course of your long and varied ministry here in your adoptive Diocese of Dromore. And of course, among your circle of friends, parishioners and friends in Belela, in Lurgan, in Craigavon, in Ross Trevor, and here in Uri, where your ministry continues undimmed and undiminished 50 years on. A great tsunami of change not all of it for the worse, it has to be said, has engulfed the world, including our beloved church, in the last 50 years or so. In fact, this tsunami of change has coincided almost exactly with the span of Michael's priestly life. What we need to do now, I suppose, is to gather up whatever pieces of the jigsaw we can and to begin the patient task of piecing them all back together again. However, of course, the church that emerges in the future, it will be the same church, but not the church that we know now. The same church because it will continue to be centered on the person of Jesus of Nazareth, risen from the dead. It will be the same church. The church will be a different style of church, though, because the Holy Spirit is leading us to a new Pentecost, to a new time of, to a time of renewal, to a time of rebirth. We place our whole trust in the Lord. The feast of Corpus Christi reminds us again of this unfailing presence of the risen Lord 
in the bread and wine and flesh and blood, in a crumb of bread, in the rags of the street corner Christ. The whole mystery is. The Golden Jubilee of Michael Hackett reminds us that God's people, the men and women of the church, as they move on, as we move on to mid-century and beyond, we will continue to need good priests. Good priests who are close to God and close to the people. Priests like the one we celebrate today. Good men like Michael Hackett. Michael, thanks for everything. Very sincere thanks from each person here. Amen. Respond to that. <laughs> Lived in a dream. Anyway, it was wonderful. Father Michael is a wordsmith. He's a poet. He can put language together. Thank you very much indeed. I'll just say it in Latin. I go to be gratias, again. Let's, let's stand then for the creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made in consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us the men, for our salvation, we come down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Proceed from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look for the Lord for his righteousness, death, the life of the world to come. Today, as we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. We pray that as a community, we may grow in communion with Christ, with one another. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, that they may continue to guide God's flock, God's flock on the path towards the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood permanent diaconate and religious life. Lord, hear us. We pray for the church that the celebration of Holy Mass will fill us with a sense of God's nearness and awe at his greatness and compassion. We remember and pray for those who are not allowed to practice their faith and cannot receive the Lord in the Eucharist. Lord, hear us. We pray for all political leaders. Encourage and guide them in their judgment and decision-making at this time. Lord, hear us. As this is a special day for fathers, we pray for all fathers around the world. Strengthen them by your love and give them grace and patience. We pray too for all fathers and grandfathers who are no longer with us. Lord, hear us. We thank God for the priesthood of Canon Hackett and its positive impact on many people across and beyond the Diocese of Tremor. Lord, hear us.
And we pray at this time for our departed brothers and sisters, in particular, Mary Johnston, formerly Thomas Street, Gerald Fagan, Michael Mallon Park, Mary Dinsmore, Ed Gallagher, Main Avenue, for Seamus Ruddy, Michael Mallon Park. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord. Let the precious light be their May their souls and the souls of all the faithful depart to the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. <coughs> Father, may the prayers we have offered come before your heavenly altar as tokens of our trust and worship. Continue to nourish us on our pilgrim journey. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amy, and I'm now asked Loretta and Neil to bring up the gifts. Thank you, Amy, for the, re the reading.
present cross and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant oh, your church, O oh Lord, we pray the gift of unity and peace whose signs will be seen in mystery in the offerings here we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. The Last Supper with his apostles, establishing the ages for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, united by one bond of charity. So we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, and pass over to the heavenly realities we have here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a song in adoration we with all the hosts of angels cry out without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant our peace and to guard, unite, and govern all throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on to the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, accept this oblation. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, and comfort us, the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Then, when he supper, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, eyes raised to heaven. 
to you, O God, and to the mighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way when the supper was ended to the chalice in his holy and venerable hands, once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Passion, the resurrection of the dead, the glorious ascension of heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we your servants and your holy people, of your glorious majesty and the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with three kindly countenance, to accept them as once you accept Please accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father and faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice of spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask the mighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of the holy angel, your altar and high, the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son will be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants, Michael's parents, and all those whom we've been asked to remember in this Eucharist, all who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, happiness, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope on your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them and fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us.
us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and with the help of your mercy. We always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace to unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, in my words of you should enter into my room. Only say the word of so
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood to live and reign forever and ever. short notices to remind everyone that the Corpus Christi procession will take this this afternoon commencing 3 p.m. at St. Mary's Church Chapel Street. Lovely day, every opportunity for a good attendance. Mary Parish Family Walk will take this on the 21st of June. There is a registration uh, fee commences at 7 p.m. Proceeds to support the youth activities of the uh, parish. Very worthwhile cause. And the uh, Bible study will continue on Thursday evenings at 7 and Lexio Divina in the parish centre on Tuesday morning after the 10.30. And the Austri uh, Promise Collection this week uh, is for youth ministry. Again, uh, a very worthwhile cause and much needed funding. Thank you. So just a brief couple of um, remarks now. Uh, over the years, I've always learned that less is more. Anyway, I um, thank Bishop Michael Breve for presiding, my fellow clergy, and especially Father Michael for his inspiring homily, always good with words. Deacon John, I offer him congratulations. Of course, Canon Francis here, who has helped out in so many ways and um, been MC today, more or less. Janice of the Golden Voice and Florence for the beautiful music ministry that I thought I was in the, the Vatican. That, that music it was brilliant. Um, and uh, our Eucharistic readers, Eucharistic ministers, um, Amy, of course, from my own family, and uh, Sarkissons, Michael Louis, uh, our acolyte Dalton, a wise head on young shoulders, and the other servers, Alphonse and Evain, and uh, Mark Byrne, a photographer extraordinaire, and everyone else who helped anyway. And thank you, people of the parish, for your support and good wishes. Because time is limited due to the Corpus Christi procession, I would suggest invited guests make their way after this Mass as, 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 without undue delay across Hill Street to the parish centre. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Okay, well. Um.